Good morning, this is Aaron with Transformed by His Truth. I'm going to play a video that's showing the other side of the protests at the DNC, Democratic National Convention, just to show you what the Jews think about this and how they feel and uh, give them a little airtime because they get very little because most of the media is owned by democratically leaning people who don't want to give the truth a chance. They just want to get their agenda pushed forward. And they are always filming the protesters. But now we get a chance to see what a pro-Israeli counter-protester has to say. So I'm going to play the video and then um, talk about it after it's over. more than the actual DNC itself. Yeah. I mean, I expect what I've always expected from them, which is a lot of pandering. And you see whoever he feels is around, he's going to get the vote. Um, I don't have a lot of faith in him or in the other presidents. Do you expect are you expecting anything um, in the speech? Do you think they'll address the issue? Do you think they'll say anything that will be a yet? I think he's lost the Jews. I think the Democrat Party has lost the Jews. I think we're gone. I think we're gone. 80% of Jews stayed in Egypt. 80% of Jews voted for Obama. We are not voting for the Democrats anymore. We are not. We are not that stupid. We have broken that trauma cycle. We are done. We are There's not. some polling suggesting that uh, President Trump is really the next winner of Do you think that's going to pan out in November? More people than I ever thought in my life. Jews have historically voted Democrats. Puppies and babies and grandmas, aunts and uncles, you name it, all voted Democrats. They're part of the Democrat Party. Are now voting for Trump locally. Locally voting for Trump. Thank God we've broken the broken them up. It only took October 7th. It only took a massacre of 400 innocent babies, men and women, for us to realize the predicament that we're in. But thank you, God, that we finally realized the predicament that we're in. And we're finally voting for the party that has our back the Republican Party and the president and the all great promises. Now, do you expect the protests here today to remain relatively peaceful? Have you seen anything <laughs> popping off here? Has anyone approached you guys, confronted you at all? We have people on our side. Listen, listen, people on our side. Listen, we're kind of America. We're in a moment. We're in a moment. We have the Christians and the Jews that are for God. They love God. And then we have people who believe in a violent God and then people who believe in an anti-God. They're anti-God. And the purple hair is the God people have ran with the violent God of Muhammad and Shiva, and they formed an unholy And so we have two people. There's no middle ground anymore, guys. The gray is gone. It is black and white. It is for God or against God. Take your side. I'm picking God. What are you thinking? Oh, okay. Um, is there anything else that readers should know who aren't here in Chicago, they're not seeing this live, uh, that they should know about, that you're seeing here and you want to convey to them? Yeah, it's very well organized, guys. We came about an hour and a half early just to make sure we're safe. Safety is so important for us. We're not violent people. We're, we're people who love everybody, even them. We love them all. I'm not just that. What, what, what message would I send to them? And all I'm saying is I'm sending light. I'm still praying for them because I love humanity and I will always pray for them. But I will protect myself and my family, but I will pray for them. What we're seeing is it's very well organized. We saw literally luxury buses parked outside here schlepping with like granny with their little walkers. I mean, it's super well organized. This is not some silly movement. There's for sure some good funding behind this. I don't know, Iran, but how are you doing that? I don't know. Okay. You can see that the Jews are not violent. 
They're peaceful protesters. They're protesting against the DNC because the DNC has notoriously abandoned Israel and left them on their own. And I'm glad to hear them say that the Jews are going to vote for Donald Trump because Donald Trump loves Israel. He will protect Israel. He will do what is necessary to help Israel be a safe and secure place for the inhabitants that live there. Now, the problem is, the reason why they've got so much um, backing and so much uh, money to get these people organized and bus them in and this and that is because they're funded by higher ups. Now, we don't know who it is. We have our guesses, but we don't know who it is for sure. But people like George Soros come to mind or people here in America that hate America that want to see it fall apart would likely be the ones that would pay for these kinds of protests and the money that it takes and the organization that it takes to to get something like this done. And month after month, they continue to do this. Um, I'm like her. I love everybody. I pray for everybody. But I feel like if America was being attacked by an enemy that did not want to live side by side with us, that did not care about our, our existence, that wanted us eliminated altogether, then I would, yes, I would want to <clears throat> defend ourselves. I think that people don't understand the whole reasoning behind this Israel and Arab battle. It goes back to Abraham in the Bible. It goes all the way back to Abraham when Abraham and Sarah were 90 years old. God promised them a son. They hadn't had a son yet. He promised them a son and told them to name him Isaac. So they waited and waited, and it still hadn't happened. And they got they said, well, we're going to figure this out on our own. We're not going to wait for God. So they had Abraham go and sleep with a, a, a foreign woman named Hagar, an Arab woman named Hagar, and they produced a son and called him Ishmael. Now, Ishmael, being the firstborn son, would normally be the one to inherit all the riches and inheritance of the father of Abraham but because Ishmael was born out of God's will and done and born and conceived and born in man's rebellion against God's will he will not receive the inheritance that the Jews would have given him so eventually Abraham and Sarah did have a son and they named him Isaac and he was the firstborn son spiritually and physically of what God promised. So it is so Isaac received all the inheritance and the riches and everything that go to the firstborn son, according to Jewish law. Now, God, they didn't want Ishmael and Hagar and all them to intermingle with their own people so they cast them out but they gave them plenty of money they gave them livestock they gave them all that they needed to go and start their own land go and start their own place to be and their own way of living and they did that and that's how the Jew that's how the Arab race came to be was Ishmael is the father of the Arab race and Isaac is the father of the Jewish race down to this day, down through all the centuries and the, the millennium, the, the, the fight has gone on between the Arabs wanting to take the land of Israel for themselves, even though they own the entire Middle East, they own tons and tons and tons of land. They want that little spot of land, which is called Israel. They want it for themselves. And it's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle between what God wanted and what man wanted. And God has brought the Jews back to their land in 1948. The Jews were dispersed in 70 AD when the Romans destroyed the temple. The Jews were scattered abroad and had no homeland for the last 2,000 years until 1948 when they were 
given back their, their homeland so that they could have a place to call their own in their own home. Well, the Arabs have never been satisfied not getting Israel and Jerusalem. God chose the Jewish people as his own. He chose them to be his chosen people because they were the only ones that didn't worship foreign gods. Everybody else around the area in that time period worshipped Egyptian gods or whatever it was. But the Jews were given God's word, God's the Ten Commandments, and followed them as best they could. They had troubles, and that's another story, but God was always faithful to them. He brought them through all kinds of battles and tribulations and all kinds of things. And so you have today, you have the Jews who have Israel as their land since 1948. And they had took a barren desert and turned it into a prosperous agriculture, agriculturally prosperous scientifically prosperous, medicinally prosperous. They've got so many wise people in the Jewish race because God blessed them and gave them all kinds of knowledge and, and uh, blessings. And because the, the Jews own Israel and are the overseers of that land, the Arabs don't like that. They want that land. Even though, like I said, they own the rest of the Middle East. It's just it's a spiritual battle between God and the devil. And who's going to win over in the end? And of course it's going to be God. I don't want to go into the whole tribulation period and all that right now. But um, God wins in the end. And the devil goes to the lake of fire. So the most important thing for someone listening to this is to take a look at your inside of your own heart take a look at what you think about god and about hell and heaven and think about this god sent his only begotten son to this world because humanity was lost and could not follow god's law so they needed a savior so that we could trust in that savior and what he did because we couldn't do it and Jesus came to this earth. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He was both God and man while he was here on earth. And he voluntarily went to the cross of Calvary to shed his precious holy blood so that we could put our faith and trust in that, in him shedding his blood, him being buried, or he died according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's what the Bible says, is that if you put your full faith and trust in what Jesus Christ has already done and finished, meaning he shed his blood to cover our sins, all of our sins, for all of humanity. He died, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It was pre-written pre about him. It's prophecy being fulfilled. He did that so that we wouldn't have to do anything to try to save ourselves because we can't. We're born in sinfulness. We're born into sin. We become we're, we're sinners from the day we're born, and we're in need of salvation from the day we're born. And the only thing we can do about it is to make a personal decision. Nobody else can make it for us. Nobody else can baptize us into salvation. They can't do anything to help us. We have to do it ourselves. Each individual person needs to admit that they're a sinner. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And we're all destined for hell because of our rebellion against God. Even if we hadn't been born into sin, we all would have sinned in against God anyway. But because we are born into sin, there's no question that we need to be saved, that we need a Savior to save us from our sins, the punishment of our sins, which is going to hell and being separated from God for all eternity. So Jesus Christ came to this earth to do just that. He came to set us free so that we could live a life full of peace and joy and hope because we have our souls are saved if we put our faith and trust in what 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 says. It's the how that Christ died for our sins by shedding his precious holy blood to cover our sins and to wash us clean. 
that he died according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he rose again according to the scriptures. That is what saves us today, trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone. No getting baptized, no turning from sin, no going down to the front of the aisle, no keeping the sacraments, no doing good works, no trying to be a better person, no trying to keep the Ten Commandments. None of that will save you. It won't save us. Our our efforts at righteousness are like filthy rags before God. They don't count for anything. So we need to put aside pride and fear and place our full faith and trust in what Jesus Christ has already done for us. He set us free. We just need to accept it, receive it, and be free from all the, the punishment of sin. There'll be such a burden lifted from you when you know that you're not going to hell. Because in everybody's subconscious, they know that there's a real God. And they know that there's a punishment for their sin. Or for our sin. So we need to come to that place where we are willing to put aside all of our own efforts of any kind. The only thing that we do is place our faith and trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone to save our souls. That's what saves us today. And one day soon, after the rapture of the church, God will go back to working with the Jews. He stopped working with the Jews when they rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior. He was working with the Jews, trying to get them to believe Jesus, that he was their Savior and their their Messiah, and they rejected him. And once they did, God's timing with the Jews and working with the Jews stopped. And he started building the body of Christ, the church. So in the last 2,000 years, God has been working with Gentiles, who are not people who aren't Jews. And there's been millions and millions of people who have been added to the body of Christ. Jews included, but not very many, but there are some Jews that get saved. But God's Timing, once the, once the church is finished, once the last person has become a Christian and the church is built and finished to God's liking, then he will rapture us out of here. We will be taken up to heaven and then the, he will start his timing again. His clock will begin again where he's working with the Jews again to try to get the Jews to understand that Jesus Christ is their Messiah. Now, there have got, there's videos on... Um, what's going to happen after the rapture and uh, there are lots of good well there's only a few good websites that I know of I'm going to link this I'll see if I can link this article I don't know if I can or not because it's a video but I'll, I'll try to link that and I'll link how to be saved I'll link how to rightly divide I'll link how to um, I'll, li I'll link something on understanding what to do after the rapture in case you don't get saved before the rapture comes and you're stuck in the tribulation this will this video will teach you what's going to happen and what you need to do in order to be saved at that point because it's a little bit different than what, how we get saved now but how we get saved now is by faith alone through grace alone in Christ alone during the tribulation it'll be faith alone through grace alone in Christ alone and you'll have to die for your faith that, that's a whole another story I don't want to get into too much but um, it's for another video but anyway um, you need to place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone and his finished work on the cross when he said it is finished that's what he meant and when we learn how to rightly divide the word of God which means we apply the proper scriptures to the body of Christ and proper scriptures to Jews. Not every scripture in the Bible is meant to be applied to our life. We don't apply most of the Old Testament to our lives, and there's books in the New Testament that we don't apply to our lives. That's another video on rightly dividing, which I will I will prepare or uh, provide a link on how to rightly divide. And I hope that you'll check out these links because they're full of great information. It'll help you grow as a Christian. It'll help you come to the knowledge of the truth. And uh, once you learn how to rightly divide the Bible, it all makes sense. There are no more contradic seemingly contradictions. There is no more confusion. It all makes sense when you learn how to rightly divide according to 2 Timothy 2.15. And the Lord wants us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
So I hope that you'll check out the Rightly Dividing links, and I hope that you'll check out how to be saved. And I'll put a Bible chart on there that shows where all Bibles have come from to make sure you're reading the right Bible. And I hope that this has helped you today. I hope this helps you, whether you are a lost person that needs salvation, or if you're a Christian who needs encouragement, or if you're a Christian who wants to learn more and, and grow in the spiritual wisdom and knowledge of the Lord. I pray that you would be blessed by this video, be blessed by the links, and grow in your knowledge of the Lord. Have a great day.